Hello, welcome to Books with Lexi. In this video, I'm going to be reading three recently released horror books. These are not brand new releases. They have come out in September and October, but they're still very recent. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I post two to three videos a week and host reading sprints as well. So the books that I'm going to be reading are The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is my third from this author. And this is a YA Carrie retelling. I will also be reading Gallows Hill by Darcy Coates. This, I believe, is my fifth or sixth. My fifth from this author. This is a haunted house set on a winery. And then I will be reading a new to me author. I will be reading Mother Thing by Ainsley Hogarth. This is now out, but this was my NetGalley copy that I have, so I'll be reading it on my Kindle. I believe this is following a woman who is being haunted by her mother-in-law. I'm very much looking forward to reading all three of these and I cannot wait to share my thoughts with you. I am 34% into Gallows Hill by Darcy Coates. This is my fifth Darcy Coates that I've read this year alone. I have not read any before this year. Um, so thank you to Erin for putting Darcy on my radar. Um, we are following this woman, Margot, as she is attending her parents' funeral. She used to live with her parents and then for some unknown to her reason, she was sent away. Um, she had no relationship with her parents. She is now like a grown woman. I think she's like close to 30. I can't remember if she's over or under, but she finds out that both of her parents die at the same time. They both die of heart attacks in their house and she ends up inheriting their house which also comes with a winery business. The winery makes a decent amount of money but the problem is that the house and the winery are built on this hill that used to be used for hanging people for their crimes. So uh, obviously a lot of the people in the town don't like this. People say it's cursed. There's some weird things going on in the house. Um, some weird like alarm systems, some like weird things to protect the house. How many times can I say weird? <laughs> but now we are following Margot learning about the house, about the history, trying to figure out if she is going to stay on this property and run this business or if she is going to try to sell it um, and if she can like get out of this house alive, you know. Um, so it is a haunted house story. I think the backstory is really interesting. Once again, the atmosphere is really good. I'm definitely enjoying my time reading this. I really have no complaints. I'm excited for the more spooky stuff to start to happen, especially now that we're starting to learn things with Margot. So yeah, that is my update for now. I'll talk to you once I'm two thirds of the way through, but as of right now, I'm very much enjoying this. The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. I recently went to a book event and she was there and I bought this as a signed copy but I was with Michelle and she had some other books she wanted to get signed um so I stood in line and saw her she was really nice we were in signing lines the whole time so we didn't really go to any of the panels but um people that went and saw her speak seemed to really love it I follow her on Instagram I think she's great this makes me nervous for a multitude of reasons one it's YA which like I don't usually love Two, I didn't really like Carrie, and this is a Carrie retelling, but I am 20% into this, I believe. I just got to part two, and I'm really liking it so far. I am mostly listening to the audiobook while I'm doing other things, but obviously, like, whenever I'm not, I'm following along. The audiobook is really great. It's full cast. There's a podcast element in this that I did not know about, so, like, it sounds like a podcast. So what is happening is we are following the present day, which is the podcast element. We are following some dude. I don't know what his name is. No idea. Um, but he is trying to convince this other person who didn't know anything about this case that like, Maddie has powers or something? I don't know. So Maddie is the Carrie of this um, and she is a teenager who her father is raising her. Um, her father is white. They are in a southern state and her mother was black but 
I think either died in childbirth or la I think she died in childbirth. Um, but Maddie is white passing, so her father is forcing her to present that way. Um, her hair has to be straightened every day. She's told that she has to miss school if the weather is going to be bad and possibly make her hair wet to give away that she is biracial. So he like forces her to check the weather every day, all this stuff, and she's like not allowed to go out of the house if it's going to rain. That ends up happening very early on. She's in gym class and then it starts to rain out of nowhere and her hair gets wet and then her hair, which is naturally curly, starts to show. So she can't really do anything about that and um, she goes to class still trying to hide it but then these like terrible students start to like throw things in her hair um, to like make them stick. It's just... So she's like encountering bullying because of this and we know in the present timeline that it was like a Carrie type situation where something happened at prom and they were only two survivors and the, um, the podcast guy is trying to prove that it was her and her powers. I really like the podcast elements in here. Typically one of my issues with YA is that like I don't want to hear about high school drama but it's not just like kind of dumb things in here which is usually my main issue um like it's important stuff and so like it's not bothering me at all like to be in the high school setting there was a video that went viral about Maddie being bullied and like things thrown in her hair and everything so now they are trying to put on their first integrated prom um up until this point they've all been segregated <sighs> and this is not like they have cell phones Oh gosh, yeah, it's, it, there's a lot, like, this book is a lot already, but I think it is written very well, it's interesting, and I am really excited to see what goes down at this prom that causes this, like, mass destruction. She is starting to explore the, like, the telekinesis stuff that is in Carrie, so I can't wait. I am now at part three, which is 66% in, so exactly two-thirds. I don't know why I picked that angle to start. So I'm definitely seeing the parallels to Carrie in here. Like, it is very clearly a story inspired by Carrie, but I think it is a lot more interesting. There's a lot more happening. Um, I, I just generally like it a lot more. There are so many horrifying things happening in here with bullying and racism, specifically racism at this point, and it's just, like, it's a lot to read, but Tiffany D. Jackson's writing is incredible. The way that she is, like, telling this story is also incredible like all of the stuff that she is taking from Carrie is the good stuff and then she's leaving the stuff that like so far I could not recommend it more I am not typically somebody that likes YA but this one is just so good um it definitely is a tough read like it's a lot of really difficult subject matter it is a lot um but I think it's important and I think it's done well and I'm really glad that I'm reading it I am 66% into Gallows Hill, so I'm two-thirds of the way through. I don't know why I said that. Those are the same things. Okay, we're going to be honest. It's probably been three weeks since I've last talked to you. Um, because of Halloween weekend, I didn't just... I don't know how I functioned in October. I started this at the beginning of the month, and I was reading it on KU before I would fall asleep. And then I just, like, that ended up not happening. So, I literally have no idea what I have told you. I really should have watched that clip back before because, like, I have no thoughts in my brain. I'm, I'm enjoying the setting of this. I like the winery setting. I think that the things that are happening in here were not expected. Uh, yeah, I definitely was shocked by something. Like, it was not not anywhere close to being on my radar and the explanation i'm currently on sprints on cassidy's channel and cassidy and kaylee are both reading this and they, <laughs> they have some serious issues with the explanation of some things and like same but like that's uh, it's a horror book like i don't know um 
doesn't bother me. <laughs> so I don't know what that says about me. But I'm really enjoying the atmosphere. That's pretty much what this book is. There's not a whole lot of plot. The plot that is happening is interesting. No real thoughts. Generally, I'm just enjoying this. I think that the creepy moments in here are done really well. And that's about it for now. I have read a third of this today. I probably won't finish tonight, but I should be able to finish tomorrow. That'd be great. I also just realized that I started this video with this book. Then I read The Weight of Blood, didn't update you on my final thoughts, and now I'm talking about this again. Anyway, so sorry this is chaotic. So tomorrow I'll be back with my final thoughts on this and The Weight of Blood. Hello, I'm here to talk to you about The Weight of Blood and Gallows Hill, and also I've started Mother Thing. So just letting you know that I'm not going to give you any information on that because I'm like 12% in. So I'll talk to you again a little bit later, but I have started it. Okay, first, let's talk about The Weight of Blood. This absolutely incredible five stars, one of my favorite books of the year. This is a Carrie retelling. It very closely follows the plot of Carrie. I read Carrie last year and I gave it three stars. I thought it was okay, but I wasn't in love with it. Um, this one, way better in my opinion. I liked the writing more. I think it added a lot to the story because on top of it just dealing with Carrie being bullied, we are also getting that with racism added into it. So this is pretty much the story of Carrie, but on top of that, we are following our main character who is white passing and has done that her entire life because of her very racist dad and she goes to a school where they have segregated proms so people find out that um what's her name Maddie yeah I don't know I looked at the back it's not on there Maddie they find out that she is mixed because her hair gets wet um, and then she's made fun of and it becomes this like public thing the media finds out and this takes place in 2014 and people are like rightfully judging them um so then they decide to uh, get better publicity for their school they're going to have an integrated prom obviously some people are more um into that than others we're getting a bunch of different perspectives um i think all of these characters are flawed which is very interesting i like the discussions it had i think it does carry better than carry um, I think the audiobook is incredible. It is full cast with sound effects. Um, I like the podcast element in here. So we're getting other perspectives outside of the like school because we're getting that as it happens. And then we're getting like present day podcast elements. Um, so yeah, absolutely incredible. I am so glad that I have a signed copy of this. I really love this and this will likely end up on my favorites of the year list. And actually, another favorite of the year, this one, also five stars. This is my new favorite Darcy Coats. It has beat out the Carol Hot, which whenever I read that, I said it was one of my favorites of the year. The ending of this, I was shocked. The choices that were made in here, uh, wow. I was, I was, I wasn't expecting really anything that happened in the last half of this. Personally, if I was in this situation, dead. I would be dead. Uh, would not survive this. Could not be me. Yeah, this was so interesting. The explanation for things the way things had to happen. I was stressed. I was so tense reading some of this and then just seeing it continue and then finding out the way everything came together and like the atmosphere and just, oh, it was good. It was so good. Um, highly, highly recommend this one. And I cannot wait to read more from Darcy Coates. I don't anticipate any of her other ones that are out currently beating this one out. This is my fifth that I've read from her and I like her writing and I'm gonna continue reading her stuff. It's very atmospheric um, and it's a fun time. This one is like 377 pages. I don't know why I was so specific about that and still probably wrong. No, it was 377. That doesn't matter. Anyway, so it's fairly long, but 
it is really really good I think it's worth the read this is on KU and I would recommend checking this out so the fact that I got two incredible like new favorites no pressure to mother thing right um so far I'm not sure how I'm feeling about the writing in that one um but I'll talk to you again once I'm probably a third into it I'll see you later so I am now a third into mother thing I think I'm 36 percent in and so far I'm really bored um well the last like chapter was interesting but before that boring um we are following our main character oh god i don't know what her name is and she and her husband have moved in with his mother she is struggling with her mental health and they move in to help her and she ends up at the very beginning of the book dying by suicide and in the synopsis it says that she our main character is being haunted by her mother-in-law but there's no ghost nothing has happened and like I recently loved a book where nothing happened, but I really liked the character. In this one, like, the character's fine, but I am not, like, super into her as a character. Also, ignore how tired I look. I didn't sleep a lot last night. Here we are. So, yeah, I just, like, I don't understand my own reading taste because I've loved books that are, like, kind of boring. <sighs> I don't know. It's just, like, so slow. Like, the synopsis hasn't even happened yet. So our main character did not have a good relationship with her own mother, and she was hoping that her relationship with her mother-in-law, her name is Laura, I do know that, um, would be a lot better, but it ended up being one of those things where it was like, oh, you're not good enough for my son, so, like, everything she did was not up to her standards. Um, so she ended up not getting that relationship. So, like, she is not glad that she's gone, but, like, she's not heartbroken like her husband is. But he's obviously having a really rough time. And then, like, he starts to start acting, like, kind of strange. And not, like, strange in a way where he's just, like, grieving. It's, like, weird things. Um, so I'm assuming this is the lead up to... Finding out that his mother is possibly now a ghost in their house or something. I don't know. Like, really nothing has happened. That's why I'm struggling so much to, like, form sentences. Also, I'm tired. Um, but, like, I don't know. I am not loving the writing. It's a little too much for me. Like, I don't think it's bad at all, but I'm struggling to, like, sit down and read this like more than one chapter at a time because it's just a lot to get through and it feels like it is just now starting to pick up and I know I've talked to Katrina and she said that the beginning is a little tough to get through but then it gets really good so I think I've made it past that point. Part of me wanted to DNF this yesterday um, but I, this is an arc so I want to be able to review it and also I'm interested to see where it goes so I'm not going to DNF right now because I feel like it's about to pick up I'll come back and talk to you once I'm two-thirds of the way through but right now this is by far my least favorite for this video so I'm on sprints and um I just hit a thousand subscribers I don't know if I am going to cry or throw up. <laughs> Actually, I think probably both. But right now I'm leaning towards crying. Um, thank you. I don't have words. This is the best community that I could be a part of. And I'm just really thankful for everybody. I'm going to attempt to... Continue reading Mother Thing now. Uh, 
we'll see how that goes. I just started sprints and I was starting to finish that book tonight. But like, how am I supposed to function? I don't know. I'll talk to you later. I have come to you with sad news. <laughs> I am going to be DNFing mother thing. I made it 55% in and nothing is going on. I'm just honestly so bored. And even if the ending is good, it's to the point where I'm not going to care. Like, I've been struggling to read this. I have been reading this book for nine days. This book is 300 pages. And for me, that is like way too long for a book. Like that means I'm not enjoying it. I'm not wanting to pick it up. I'm just not having a good time with it. And yes, I did take forever to read Gallows Hill, but it was just a different situation. I wasn't actively trying to read it. This, since I started it, I have been trying to read it. And I'm struggling every time I read one chapter and I put it down. I am on sprints. Like, I have been on sprints since 4 o'clock. It is 10.50. And I have read 20% of a 300-page book in 7 hours. Like, that's not... No, I'm clearly not having a good time. I know that I could not pick it up ever again and be fine. Oh, the little ghost looks so cute over there. Anyway, I just can't do it. There's nothing specifically wrong with it. Like, the writing is not for me, I don't think, but it's not bad. And I feel bad because I have an ARC copy of this. I wanted to love it, but I just sadly do not. Um, which is really a bummer, but like... It is what it is. I can't love everything and I'm not the kind of person that will push through the majority of a book and still end up loving it based on just the ending alone. Obviously if people do that like that is totally fine and I'm not judging them but me personally like I can't. I just can't. And I'm on sprints on Kelsey's channel with her and Amy. I'm having the best time. Like, my cheeks hurt from laughing so hard. So, that has just been <laughs> wonderful. I've been enjoying hanging out in sprints. But, like, they were both, like, you just need to DNF it. Like, because of everything I was saying about it. Um, So, that is what I'm going to be doing. Which is really a bummer. Like, I loved the first two books in this video. And then to end it on this. But, it's fine. I'm gonna move on. I can finally read other things because I've been like putting off reading because I have not been enjoying this one. So that is it. I did read two incredible books though, both The Weight of Blood and Gallows Hill were five stars. And like they are some of my favorite books I've read this year. So the fact that I did sadly DNF Mother Thing like, and it kind of balances out. If you've made it to the end, leave me a wine glass emoji for Gallows Hill. And I would love to know what your favorite recent release horror book has been. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!